Hi, for those that don't know me, my name's Steph. I'm a Community Programs Manager with Polio Australia. We're doing a series of videos over the coming weeks while we're unable to connect with people face to face because of the coronavirus situation. We hope you find these videos helpful and informative, but we would also really love to hear from you and give you the opportunity to hear from each other because that personal experience is really valuable. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll notice that comments are switched off, but you can go to the link in the video description that will take you to the Facebook post where you can add your comments and we would really invite you to do so. This is the first of a few videos about fatigue. We know that it's a big issue for a lot of people who've had polio, so we want to talk about it a few times. We're going to talk in this video about pacing. And one thing I'll say about pacing at the start here is that pacing is also a really important strategy in managing chronic pain. So if that's you, then think about pacing in terms of your pain as well as fatigue or perhaps instead. Now what is fatigue? I'm sure we all know what fatigue is. For polio survivors, it could be a muscle fatigue, so specific to the muscles where they just can't get going anymore, or it could be a generalized fatigue. And that's a whole body, whole being experience of fatigue. Some of the signs that fatigue is hitting that you're about to get to that wall might be physical signs like weakness or pain in muscles. You might get shaky. Your body might slump. Your posture might slump forward. You might even do things like clench your jaw. There also might be some mental signs of fatigue. So you might feel a bit foggy in your mind. It might be hard to concentrate. You might even get a bit irritable. So probably we all know what those signs are for ourselves, that fatigue is on its way or already here. An important thing I would say about fatigue is it is a very common symptom of the late effects of polio, but there may be other causes that you want to rule out. So have a chat with your doctor about the fatigue that you're experiencing so that you can rule out other possibilities. Also talk to the doctor about your medications, whether there's any medications that might be contributing to your fatigue and whether there's anything different that you could take instead or sometimes interactions between medications could be contributing. So I would really recommend that you chat with your doctor. Now pacing is a strategy that we talk about often with fatigue and also chronic pain. Some people don't like to hear it because all they hear is the idea that they're being slowed down or told to stop and that can be really frustrating for people. So I do want to say that I understand that, but I am going to explain what pacing is and hope that it's helpful for you. Pacing is basically the opposite of what we call the boom-bust pattern of activity. Now the boom-bust is where you're doing something, you start to feel significant fatigue or it might be a big increase in your pain, you continue, you push through, you keep going until you absolutely have to stop. Okay, so for example, you might be out in the garden, you're starting to feel a bit tired, but you really wanted to get the vacuuming done today, and after that, the dishes need to be done, and then I'll rest. Okay, and you might be so fatigued, so crashed out, that you spend the whole next day in bed as well. Okay, it's different for everyone, but basically the boom-bust pattern is the go, 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 and crash. Pacing is about learning what your limits are, and actually stopping and resting, before you reach that point. I'm going to use vacuuming as an example just because it's something that we all understand even if it's not something that we do. So let's say for example that it takes you an hour in a morning to vacuum the house. By the end of that hour, well done, you've got the vacuuming done, but you are so fatigued that you go back to bed and you have no energy left. You were going to get up and make yourself a nice lunch but you just don't have energy for that so you get up and you have something quick and instant and go back to bed. You had a coffee date arranged with a friend but you have to cancel that because you've got no energy left in the afternoon either. You were going to go outside because it's a beautiful day, you were going to go outside and do some painting on your easel but you don't have the energy for that either. So you spend the day in bed, you just manage to get out to grab a quick meal for lunch and for dinner and that's it. So the vacuuming has taken an hour but it has basically cost you your whole day. What we want to do in order to pace is recognize when those signs of fatigue are kicking in. So let's say you noticed at the 45 minute mark that really you were slumping a bit, 
you were slowing down, you were feeling very tired. So that's probably the sign that fatigue was really kicking in for you. Now with pacing, we don't stop at that point, even though that's a better thing to do. With pacing, we actually stop before that point. So that means you might want to stop at the 30 minute mark. So fatigue hasn't really kicked in yet. You're doing okay, but you stop and rest anyway. Okay, so you do half an hour of vacuuming, you manage to get half your vacuuming done. You stop and rest, it might be a lie down or a sit down. And then you're able to get up and prepare that nice lunch that you wanted to have. You have your lunch, you sit and rest for a bit after lunch, and then you've got energy back to go and have that coffee date with your friend. You come home from that coffee date, you stop and rest again, and you've got energy, you go outside, get into the sunshine and you do your painting. You come inside and have a rest, you prepare some dinner, have your dinner, have a rest, you get the idea. So your day looks like this, activity, rest, activity, rest, activity, rest. You're going in waves throughout the day rather than go, go, go and crash. It takes some doing, it's easy to say and much more difficult to actually put into practice. And you need to know what your limits are in order to be able to stop and rest before you reach those limits. We will go through in another video about an activity diary but basically what that is, is you write down what you're doing throughout the day for a number of days or a week or two and you get a sense of what you're able to tolerate. So not only do you write down what you're doing, but you rate your energy levels out of 10. So you get an idea of your patterns of fatigue and your tolerances of each activity so that you can learn to structure things around those tolerances so that you can learn to stop and rest before the point that you really feel that you need to. Now that's pacing in a nutshell. I hope it's been helpful. Please add your comments so that you can share and learn from each other. Thanks.